Hello there, friends. Welcome back. We are finally, finally back outdoors. And we're going to do some iron bridge walkthroughs today. It's been a long time coming, but we, uh, we're finally here. And this first one that is revealing itself now is going to be the longest one of the four that we're going to look at today. This is a two span bridge plus this approach span that we're looking at now. The whole thing is four hundred and twenty four feet long. It was built in eighteen ninety. We're visiting this bridge in August, so can see that all of the trees are still green. And as we progress through the video, the, the season will get a little later, a little later, and we'll get to watch the colors change. Iron bridges are particularly good for watching the fall colors because obviously they're open in their architecture. distinct experience from being on a covered bridge. Covered bridge is very much like being in a building with windows. But an iron bridge lets all of that beauty in. You're never cut off. find it to be a, a wonderfully immersive way to be outdoors. You can tell that this bridge isn't used for vehicular traffic anymore. It was closed in 2006, I believe. And it's, uh, it's been the subject of a fair amount of 
graffiti over the years, which does tend to ruin a little bit of the uh, time travel effect of walking through it. It's hard to pretend that you're back in 1890 when you're surrounded by multicolored spray paint. Although, you do wonder, the youth of the late 1800s were surely as mischievous as the youth of today. I wonder what passed for vandalism or graffiti in the 1890s. I learned a lot while working on this video. I learned that iron bridges from this time are oftentimes replaced rather than preserved compared to the, their wooden covered bridge counterparts, even though the bridges may be contemporaries of each other. I read a summary of one report that said, in a particular state in the Midwest, from 1987 to 99 due to poor planning and conflicting interests. The state lost 62% of its metal bridges that were built between 1860 and 1930. It seems that the, the argument for preserving and maintaining a wooden covered bridge is somehow easier to make than the same argument for an iron bridge for this from the same period which was disappointing to realize in terms of being a, uh, a snapshot of our transportation past. These iron bridges are every bit as relevant as their covered wooden counterparts and again provide a, a distinct walkthrough experience. like to be the last vehicle 
that crossed this bridge in 2006. Even with the graffiti, this is a, a very handsome bridge. This next bridge is quite a bit shorter, so the walkthrough will also be quite a bit shorter. But this is an interesting counterexample to the first bridge that we looked at. It was a brilliant day when I visited this bridge. And we're in October now. And this is a wonderful reveal. As you can see, the bridge has been painted bright blue and against the blue sky. The thing is just wonderful. This bridge was built in 1903. It's a single span, 152 feet long. But the thing about this bridge is that it wasn't built here. It was originally built over 90 miles away from here in a rural setting on a small road crossing a stream. And it stood there for over a century until 2008 when it was disassembled, reconditioned, and moved here, where it was rebuilt and became part of this city's walking trail system recreational trail system. What a great example this is of repurposing this item from the past. This town could have put any modern wooden 
walking bridge here at this site. And I'm sure it would have been very easy for the planners in the county where this bridge was deemed no longer needed to just scrap it. But they communicated and this move made sense and now here it stands. This town even went through the trouble of, of installing lighting along the outside edges of this bridge so that it even looks good at night. You can see the nearby vehicle bridge there in the distance. A little bit of color in those trees. But what an asset to the community this turned out to be. And what an attractive segment of this recreational trail with the benches and the potted plants. As we can see, well in uh, use. Yeah. How's it going? I just find this not only to be a great walkthrough experience, but just a great example of bridge reuse and conservation. It's a lovely, lovely place to be. season. You can see the leaves on the ground and this beat up one lane bridge sign. This is one of my favorite approaches. I think this bridge just looks so at home in this setting. This bridge was built in 1885 or thereabouts. It's a two-span bridge, 242 feet long. But this one is still in use. It's a single lane bridge in a rural, low traffic setting. And this bridge 
was deemed appropriate to continue serving in this place. It's been maintained and even strengthened from its original specification. such a different experience. Look at that view. It's like somehow walking through the the skeleton of a dinosaur surrounded by this superstructure but being able to see out and see all around visited this bridge multiple times during the course of this video and there wasn't a single visit to the bridge that what where I didn't see another person or multiple people come along to take pictures of the bridge or take pictures of their family standing on the bridge. I think one person was having school pictures taken on this bridge. I think it's wonderful that even though this is a low traffic area and at the end of the day the bridge is just here to perform a function. The bridge itself draws people here to this place. This bridge and this setting get seen by people and experienced by people who would not see this place if the bridge wasn't here. Who probably wouldn't see this place if 
this bridge was replaced by a modern concrete structure. There's something about the past, there's something about an object like this that compels us to stop and slow down, get out of the car, and just walk it, or just drive through. miss the experience because we're so focused on our destination. This small, quiet bridge is the destination for a lot of people, and I think that's amazing. So it's not just me. Look how the color has changed compared to the first bridge that we looked at. My favorite season is upon us. Now, this bridge has a small trail to the side of it that makes it easy to walk underneath the bridge. We're not going to walk underneath, but I do want to get down here, past this little drainage pipe here, and close with a view of the bridge at the level of the deck. as we bid farewell to this one, standing so simply, but still so proudly, as it does its job and calls visitors to it. a really impressive structure. It's not used anymore for vehicular travel, as you can see by the, the posts in front, but it is maintained and restored. I love the aqua green fences along the sides. This bridge was built in 1903. It's 
323 feet long, but it's a single span. So that is a, a pretty big span. If you read the sign there, you see that one of my favorite aspects of this bridge is that it was built at a particular spot across this river where there was a ferry before. Actually, the first bridge in this video also was built at a ferry location. I really like the thought of that because, you know, the locals here decided that, you know, this particular spot was the place of greatest convenience to cross this river and so a ferry business was established here I don't know what kind of ferry it was I'm sure it was you know something that was pulled across by hand it was probably good for people and horses, but probably not for wagons. And so this bridge, being here at all, was because a decision had already been made and a business was already here to get people across at this point. Which means the, the modern bridge that was a little bit down the way that bypassed this bridge was also built there where it was built. because that ferry business operated here at one time many, many years ago. All of the artifacts and construction that's happened here versus somewhere else because this was the spot where people wanted to cross. the ripple impacts through time. I was here at this bridge on a very crisp morning, a brilliant day, but a very chilly day. This visit has one of my favorite views that I encountered during the making of this video. And it's right here. I'm going to walk a little bit backwards to frame this up a little bit better. But I love the way the trees kind of arch in and partially frame but also partially obscure the view of this bridge. What a great shot. What a great sight that is. When I was 
was here, I, I had to, uh, I had to watch my footing just a little bit because ice had formed on the deck overnight. And when I was here, the parts of the deck that were in sun had begun to thaw, but the ones in shadow had not. It's as if the bridge was still in the process of waking up for the morning. And I was visiting it before it had completely gotten itself together for the day. This is one of those bridges that makes you feel a little bit small when you're walking through it. so blue this morning. You can see the colors have changed even a little bit more now as we get later into October. You never know what you're going to get with fall colors on any given year. Sometimes you get lucky and they really explode. Sometimes they go straight from green to brown, it seems. For the, the last part of this video, we're going to do one final walkthrough, but I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to leave you to experience the walkthrough and the sounds by yourself. We're going to revisit that, that little bridge from earlier in the video, the single lane bridge, but it's going to be 20 days later in the month from the previous video, so you'll have a chance to just watch the colors see how much difference there is, how much difference 20 days can make. And that'll be the last piece of this video, which I hope you have enjoyed as much as I, as I have putting it together. Thank you very much for being here with me, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.